hello everyone today we are going to discuss about dispersion of air pollutants already in the previous video we have discussed about the ELR and ALR that is environmental lapse rate and adiabatic lapse rate also we know that diffusion of pollutants mainly the air pollutant into the environment is governed by the ELR and ALR values that means the environmental lapse rate and adiabatic lapse rate values by comparing these two lapse rate it is possible to predict to some extent the dispersion of gases emitted from a source okay the emitted gases known as the plume and their source are known as the stack Typical type of environmental conditions characterized by different relative positions of ELR and ALR lines are shown here. This phenomenon generally occurs in the lower atmosphere generally less than 300 meter above ground level. So depending on the position of ELR line and ALR line, plume patterns can be divided into 7 types. These are known as first one looping plume, then neutral plume, then coning plume, fanning plume, lofting plume, fumigating plume, and last one is trapping plume. So, before going to discuss about the plume patterns, uh, first of all, we need to know the environmental conditions. The environmental conditions can be two types super adiabatic condition and sub adiabatic condition, depending on the ELR and ALR positions. So if you see the graph here for super adiabatic condition, it is ELR greater than ALR. Already we have discussed these positions in the last video, though I will just introduce this one. Uh, that is, in case of super adiabatic situation, the ELR line lies below the ALR line. So why this is ELR greater than ALR? This is the lapse rate. If you see the graph very carefully, uh, you can see in the y-axis height in meters or the altitude in meters. So at 1000 meter height, the environment uh, temperature is 15 degree centigrade. And at that 1000 meter height, the particle is having temperature between 20 to 25. So basically the environment is having lower temperature than the particle. So the lapse rate is higher in case of environment that's why it is having the lower temperature and lapse rate is lower in case of particle that's why the particle is having higher temperature so that's why the condition is written here ELR is greater than ALR similarly the sub adiabatic situation is just reverse of the previous one that is at a certain height thousand meter the particle will have lower temperature than the environment that means the lapse rate in case of particle is higher than the environment that's why ELR is less than ALR and that's why it is known as the sub adiabatic condition okay now let us see the first plume that is looping plume in the next slide in case of looping plume uh, it only occurs when the environment is super adiabatic which creates highly unstable environment. Thus the dispersion and mixing of pollutant, mainly the air pollutant is rapid. In some cases, due to the presence of high turbulence, higher ground concentration may occur. Due to this problem, in the areas having super adiabatic condition, higher stacks may be needed to ensure uh, very good dispersion of air pollutants okay now come to the next slide there is second plume known as the neutral plume neutral plume occurs when ELR is more or less equal to ALR that means the value will be more or less same environmental lapse rate will be equal to a slightly more or less adiabatic lapse rate in that case plume will rise directly into the upward direction 
and uh, due to the upward movement of the smokes or gases you can say that minimum concentration of pollutants may occur near the ground surface now come to the next plume the plume name is coning plume coning plume occurs when two special situation is prevailing in the environment the first situation is the wind speed is greater than 32 km per hour and also the second situation is there may be a presence of cloud and the cloud cover is blocking the solar radiation in daytime and terrestrial radiation in the night time and basically uh, the neutral plume changes to a cone shaped plume due to this prevailing condition that means whenever the wind speed will be greater than 32 km per hour then the neutral plume will tend to move in the horizontal direction maintaining a cone shape okay and that's why the plume name is coning plume also the condition of environment lies uh, like subadiabatic condition where the mixing and dispersion of the pollutant is minimum thus the air pollution probability increases in the surrounding area due to the presence of this coning plume now come to the next slide the plume name is fanning plume under extreme inversion condition due to negative lapse rate from the ground surface and up to a certain height above the stack gas exit point the emission will spread in the horizontal direction as it cannot go into the upward direction due to extreme stability in the environment in that case no vertical mixing will occur and plume will spread in horizontal direction keeping a fan like shape that's why the name of the plume is fanning plume now come to the next slide the plume name is lofting plume if you see the graph carefully then you will see a uh, inversion layer persist from the ground surface up to a certain limit and that limit is lower than the stack gas emission point okay or stack gas exit point so basically from the ground surface to that point there is an inversion layer and above the inversion layer there is a situation prevailing like super adiabatic condition due to this dual environmental situation that is from ground surface up to a certain point inversion and above the inversion super adiabatic condition that's why whatever gases or smokes are coming from the uh, stack that cannot cross the inversion layer barrier and that cannot go into the downward direction and due to the presence of super adiabatic condition above the inversion layer there will be huge mixing and dispersion of air pollutant in the environment and that's why this kind of plume that is lofting plume is always recommended or you can say the most favorable or ideal situation for plume dispersion or the air pollutant dispersion because in this case the mixing is higher above the inversion layer and that's why minimum ground concentration minimum ground level concentration of air pollutant will occur okay now come to the uh, next slide the plume name is fumigating plume if you uh, see carefully the graph you can see this is the reverse case of the previous one in the previous case the inversion layer was um, present from the ground surface to a certain limit below the stack gas exit point in this case the inversion layer is above the stack gas exit point so whatever pollutant is coming from the stack that cannot cross the inversion layer and go into the upward direction also you can see uh, below the inversion layer there is a situation like super adiabatic situation so whatever pollutant is coming from the stack gas 
their dispersion and their mixing will be very much high very much rapid surrounding the ground survey and as the inversion layer is present above the stack gas exit point so no gas can cross the barrier and go in the upward direction that's why from the graph also you can see that is the ground level concentration will occur very high and that's why this is the most unfavorable situation in the environment creating maximum pollution near ground surface now come to the next slide there is a last plume known as the trapping plume in this uh, trapping plume condition you can see the graph there will be two inversion layer one inversion layer will be from the ground surface to a certain limit that limit will be lower than the stack gas exit point similarly there will be second inversion layer that inversion layer will be above the stack gas exit point so basically two inversion layer is present one is below the stack gas exit point one is above the stack gas exit point and between these two inversion layer super radiovatic condition is prevailing that's why whatever amount of pollutant is coming from the stack that will be trapped between these two inversion layer and that's why the name of the plume is trapping plume because the air pollutants are trapped between these two environment uh, two inversion layer as the pollutant is trapped between these two inversion layer they can only mix within this limited area and that's why this plume is considered as bad condition for dispersion as the dispersion cannot go above a certain height always it will remain in the uh, surrounded area okay this is all about the total plume patterns now come to the next slide the topic is enhancing dispersion of air pollutant with smoke stacks due to the presence of different type of environmental conditions prevailing in your environment what type of measure you can take to enhance to increase the dispersion and mixing of the pollutant coming from a stack to minimize the ground surface or ground level concentration easily you can imagine that pollution emitted from a taller stack has to travel a longer distance to get to the ground so it will become more diluted whenever it will uh, reach the ground surface also another advantage is it may be possible for taller stacks to get above the low level inversion layers okay now in the next slide we can see from the picture that in place of uh, short stacks if you construct a taller stack or taller chimney then automatically the area available for dispersion of air pollutant will be higher that's why you can see whenever the pollutant will reach the ground surface that distance from the stack will be higher in case of a smaller stack the pollutant can reach the ground surface within a certain distance now if you construct a taller chimney then the pollutant have to spread enough to get to the ground surface which is far away from the chimney or the stack so by replacing a smaller stack with a taller stack we can minimize the ground surface con concentration surrounding the chimney or surrounding the stack okay also in some special cases when the inversion is at the ground surface we need the smoke stack tall enough to be above the ground inversion so that a lofting plume is formed 
from the ground surface up to a certain height if the inversion layer is present then we need to take uh, the smoke above the inversion layer to create a lofting plume situation automatically the smokes coming from that source cannot cross that inversion layer and go into the downward direction so that will be a favorable situation now in the next slide we can see the application of exit velocity what we can do if we can increase the exit velocity of the smoke then automatically the momentum will be higher and due to the higher momentum they will rise a certain extra height and that's why their dispersion will be higher the area available for the dispersion will be higher and automatically the ground level concentration will be lower at that situation whenever they will reach the ground so by increasing the exit velocity you can automatically reduce the ground level concentration of the air pollutant now in the next slide uh, you can see there are some methods to increase the exit velocity whatever we can do to increase the exit velocity we first of all we can use some fan or pump whenever the smoke or air pollutant is emitted from that stack you can use a pump or fan to boost their exit velocity though the usage of fan or pump requires more energy that is it, it is associated with extra energy requirement also the pump or fan will require some maintenance cost okay so if you are going to increase the velocity you have to think about this extra energy requirement and extra maintenance cost similarly what we can do uh, we can reduce the exit diameter all you know that maintaining the same discharge if we reduce the cross-sectional area then automatically the velocity will be increased that's why we can reduce the exit diameter to increase the exit velocity okay though if you are reducing the exit diameter it will cause some flow restriction now in the uh, next slide we can see the application of exit temperature of the smoke if you see carefully the picture you can easily imagine that if we can increase the exit temperature of the smoke then automatically the positive buoyancy of the smoke gases will be increased due to this increase in positive buoyancy the smoke automatically achieve some extra height whenever they are coming from the stack so by achieving some extra height the dispersion and also the mixing will be higher and whenever they will reach the ground surface the concentration basically the ground level concentration or ground surface concentration will be very much lower compared to the smokes which is emitted with a lower temperature okay so these are the different type of measurements you can take to increase the exit velocity to increase the exit temperature basically uh, we are concerned with the smoke if they can achieve some extra height by achieving some extra height their dispersion and mixing will be higher similarly we can minimize the ground level concentration of air pollutant okay so here i am concluding the discussion about the different type of plume patterns and the different type of measurements to be taken by you or by the designer uh, whenever they are going to design a stack depending on the prevailing environmental conditions thank you